Welcome back. Let's talk about Inter-Process Communication, or IPC. So what is IPC within iOS? To say it simple, IPC handles communication between different processes. As you can see in this picture, you have process 1 and process 2. And then there is a layer in the middle. You can call it services, which handle the communication. If you want to use, for example, data from process 1 in process 2. And a process can also be an app, of course. And within iOS, and macOS, there are the default components, which you already saw earlier in the hardware, which is the XNAT Unix, the Mac kernel, and then on top, there are different services. XPC is, for example, one of the services. Next to the communication of those services, there is also URL schemes, which can be shared between apps or used within apps and are using the IPC. Then there is a pasteboard. You can also call it clipboard within other applications. And there is app groups and shared containers, which is a configuration setting within apps to share data to other specific apps and XPC services, which is on top of this picture. So let's go over them one by one. What are URL schemes? So what are URL schemes? If you have a regular URL, then a URL scheme is HTTP or HTTPS or FTP, those kind of schemes. But if you build your app, you can also create your own custom prefix. So if you have an app called Microsoft Intune, then they have URL schemes registered with start with MS Outlook, for example, or MS Apps. So those are just defined in the Microsoft app, but if you create your own app, for example, Mobile Hacking Lab app, then you can also register your own MHL URL scheme. And if you build an app, it's just a property you can specify with your URL scheme. And then within the code, you need to handle it. So that's in short, the URL scheme. Then there is one specific thing called the pasteboard. So the pasteboard is a shared clipboard that allows apps to share data or small bits of data like text or images. Just a regular clipboard like you also have on your Mac or your Windows device. So again, if you go to the documentation of Apple, then there is a user interface pasteboard you can use. Object that helps the user to share data from one place to another within your app or of end from your app to other apps. And if you're testing an app, then it's useful to search for this general pasteboard because this is the system-wide general pasteboard which you can use within the whole operating system. So if this general pasteboard is used, so you can search for those type of methods. If you're doing a source code review, then that might be already a security issue, something to investigate. And you can also say, I only want to share my data within an app group. So an app group is a group of apps from the same developer where you can share data. So if you build an app with Xcode, you can go to the signing and capabilities, and then there is app groups. And then if you create those groups, it will be added in entitlements and in the property list. So it will be linked to the app. And then the last part are XPC services. Those are lightweight services that, that allow apps to communicate with separate processes. We will not dive too deep into this protocol, but it's basically a service or a layer in between apps you can use to communicate with each other. Let's look a little bit deeper into XPC which stands for Process Communication, and the X is for OS X, so specific for Mac devices and also for iOS. And it's a lightweight helper tool, services that perform work on behalf of your app. And it consists of a daemon, a launch daemon, for example, an agent and a service. And you can build an X PC service using C, Swift, or Objective-C, and with higher or low-level APIs. And this one says it's only available for iOS 17, but also old iOS versions from 10 years ago, for example, also use this XPC and IPC services, but then they just use a different API. XPC is also part of Lib System, so for older versions, you can also use the Lib System APIs, so it is always available on your device. So there are different classes like a connection, an interface, etc. And the connection is a channel between two processes. So that's very short, the documentation about Objective-C. One thing which is interesting, we will cover this later, but this mobile application testing guide from OWASP is also very useful. So this also tells you a little bit about XPC services and the security attributes. So there is an XPC services API, which is C-based, and there is a connection API. And you can also check which services are available on your device. So what we can do, we can just check this. So let's try this. And now you can see, for example, that we have WebKit, which is related to the browser, also has already about four different XPC services. So it is quite interesting. And if you have a third party application, then also maybe that application has a service. So there are different ways to look for those services. You can look into the source code 
but you can also dynamically monitor it on the device. But let's keep it for now. We will not go to, into all details because it's also quite a complex topic. But one more thing I want to show you is that also in the past there are vulnerabilities in those services. And one of the issues with those services is mainly privilege escalation. So a service can run under higher privileges than the app and the bug was an integer overflow leading to out of bound memory access. So probably it was written in C or some low level code. So you can have those types of vulnerabilities. And one other interesting thing which is mentioned in this article is that this service is running as a root. So if you exploit this service, then you immediately get root privileges on your device. So that's the most interesting part. For some of those services, if you exploit it, you can get privilege escalation and you might be able to escape the app sandbox, especially if you can become root. So I will not go in more details, but this is just an example. So this was about the inter-process communication on iOS. Hope to see you in the next video.